Hello guys, this is Jerry speaking, welcome to LJP, CBM React, episode 333, three, three digits, 333, three, three. and today we're going to be reacting to Purple Tales Podcast, episode 9. So, are you ready for that? So, we're going to react to this in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Continuing our look now at the best in children's television. This morning, the new kid, or dinosaur on the block. Saw the big purple reptile that kids can't resist. The big purple dinosaur. <laughs> Teaches about love, and, and it just kind of like soothes the kids. And always, there's that signature song. like wait what <laughs> no this is purple tales podcast welcome and carrie stinson barney how are you nancy i'm nancy yes co-host, yes yes co-host nancy J. and uh you know people i know are listening to us as podcasts yes but also if you want to see us because we do show pictures often and, and so on and you want to see how we look yeah. Especially how all of the Barney people look after all these years. Yeah. Wow! Um, be sure and look for us on YouTube. I think we're all doing pretty well too. I think we're. I think absolutely, absolutely. Carrie, how are you? I am wonderful. You look Nancy. very nice today. You love the dots, don't you? I, a little bit. You like? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. No, it looks very, very thank, nice. Thank you, thank you. I know you have been working fast and furiously, booking guests and yes. talking to people. Yes. How are, how is that coming along? Amazing, amazing. It, it's. It, these these memories are coming back, and it's so exciting. All the different people we've got coming on. Um, I'll tell you whose name I keep hearing yes, all the time. Yes, yes. I've been reading it, and, and we're getting notes from people. Yes, Bob West. Everyone wants Bob West. Bob West yeah. will be well, here. And, and Bob it, is he's the original voice of Barney. Wow, that is cool and awesome. By the way, let's get to you on. He's the voice of Barney, so there you go. He is excited, can't wait, and very excited. Here we'll we'll, we'll break some news here. He is going to take on Facebook questions from the fans. Can ask Bob questions, oh, and he great. is going to answer them here at Purple Tales Podcast. Excellent! And you know what? Wow! <laughs> wow! Okay, pretty exciting. But let's just continue on, shall we? Also, encourage people to go to purpletalespodcast.com, ask some questions, and of of people we have coming up. Yes. Or if there's somebody that you haven't heard that we're going to have yet. Just go ahead and ask it. We'll yes. just put it in the file. Yes, some of the original Backyard Gang kids oh. will be on here very soon. See, there's soon. a difference between yes. the original Backyard Gang and then the episodic that's, kids. That's right. So the first three videos were the Backyard Gang. That was the Sandy Duncan uh, episodes. And then when the TV show, that's when they switched to Barney and Friends. So we've got yeah, which I have uh, 25 years later did a vlog series about it. So... If you haven't heard about Barney and Friends vlogs, you know, I just came up with a vlog series of my own. So, based on an Adventure Time vlog series by Doug Walker. So, there you go. Let's continue on. Some of the original kids, one of the kids from the very beginning will be here. And who's coming that? Up, coming oh. up soon. Brian Epps. Everyone's been asking about Brian Epps, so. Oh, Brian Epps. Okay. So, what about Silent Grant? I heard you told me about I heard you told me about Simon Grant before. Why not him? Because he was very upset during the uh, Barney and Backyard Game videos. I'm like, are you kidding me? I saw it in the upcoming. Uh, uh, I saw it in the Dinosaur Sensation reaction video. Because now that this happened, seriously, let's continue on. He's a rapper now, right? No, 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 no that's that's Ricky Carter. Oh dear. Okay, so, so Derek. So and we've and got him coming up this. too. Okay, I'm we sorry. Do. So no, he's a lawyer, according to my friend. Um, Rick Barack Welch, if she's watching this episode of LJP, she be React. This is for you, um, uh, Veronica. So let's continue on. Brian Epps was one of their first kids. He was, yes, he played Michael. Everyone's been wanting, so we're going to be very excited oh. to have him on the, oh, that's on the great. show. Well, wow. and you know, um. And what's, uh, what's so exciting yeah. is that he has kids now. And so oh, really? He has kids? I did not know he has kids. <laughs> <coughs> so what about Patrick Leach? You know, because if, if 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 not, then then oh well. Because I thought Patrick Leach would be something cool enough. By the way, because that'd be cool enough. By the way, let's continue on. 
He's mm. going to get to, they don't really understand how big Barney was back then. So he gets to tell these stories, which I think is going to be so exciting. Yeah. I like that. I mean, I cannot wait to have all these people on. And I've got to tell you, last week's guest, Marissa. Yes. She has a whole new level of fame out there and a fan club. Everyone, Fred Holmes, one of the directors, yes, was talking about how wonderful. Love Fred Holmes. And it says she still got that same wonderful smile. Dana uh, wrote that she said she was so happy because Hannah was her favorite, favorite Barney. Oh, God. <laughs> Kid, uh, same thing from Ando. My favorite character was Marissa. Yeah. So, pre I mean, that's pretty neat yes. that we had her on. Yes, well, and I saw on, on Facebook with Marissa that she was able to connect with some of the kids that she was on with. Oh, my gosh. So they're all, now all the kids are kind of connecting again. And a lot of the Barney people are connecting that I haven't talked to in years. It's been, in fact, Bob told me he's talked to some people that he hadn't talked to in a long time. So it's really fun how everyone's kind of connecting. Well, and it's nice because the Barney creators and people who made this happen, yes. uh, the, the ins, the out, I mean, in the costume, out of the costume, all of the whole business of Barney. Yes. Mm -hmm. You all are connecting, but yes. we're also connecting with new fans, past yes. fans, future yeah, fans. I've been past fans since the mid-90s, you know. I'm going to tell Carrie about this once I get to, uh, Get to the LG Spear Me At side, you know, just by let you know about that. Let's continue on. Yes. Absolutely. Well, you see it too, Nancy, all the letters that we get each week. What a difference Barney made in their lives. And I think it's so exciting for them to see all of the people. You know, they saw the dinosaurs and they saw some of the cast, but all of the people that loved it and cared about it and, and made it for all these fans. Oh, hang on. I was going to email um, their podcast show because... That's part of my LG Spermer Yats episode taping. So, if you watch this, Carrie, this is for you, buddy. Continue. Well, just how it was all put together. Yes. I mean, just the, the, the whole technical thing. And I found something. Okay, what that, do you got for me? Well, and it has to do with the business of Barney. Okay. Okay? I love this. This was from um, a man who is involved with business development at a company called 2020 Companies. And he's, first line, who remembers Barney the Purple Dinosaur? If you remember him, you're thinking <laughs> to yourself... Where is this column going and what does it have to do with business? Right. If you do not remember Barney, you have missed out on one of the most hyped television programs for children in the 1990s. Barney was a rock star to children. Parents viewed Barney as overbearing and annoying. Not all parents, but some. <laughs> but sure. anyway, he goes on to talk about how much he liked Barney the Purple Dinosaur because he taught through song and spoken word and that the key principle was to remember basic manners and treat people fairly. And he said... The whole idea that business professionals forget is the business of Barney, which is please and thank, thank you. you. Yeah, and exactly. he said if people would not take that for granted and just start using their manners, that those are the magic words, please and thank you, that will help in business. And that yes. really was what Barney was all about. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So there, there's the business of Barney to this day. Well, and that was a big part of that I did when I first started with Barney is that that's the the end that I did. So I did a lot of um, going out and, and before the tour, I was doing events. So I was out and I, I did uh, the White House, the Easter yeah. egg, all of that, the role, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. Wow. And one of the people that I did it with is actually here today. So wow. we're gonna go. We're gonna go in a completely different direction today. Could it have something wow. to do with the business of Barney? It, it could, oh and my. the PR. We're getting good at this. Yes, we are. Let's Maybe do. We, we've done this once or twice now. Uh, 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 we're yes. finally starting to, to okay. figure it out. Do the grand introduction. So we have Jackie Smith here today. Oh, Jackie Smith. Hey, Jackie Smith. Jackie Smith. Hi, okay, never mind. Everybody. <laughs> oh, really? A entertainment manager of U.S. public situations. Okay, moving on. Continue. Good to see you again, Jackie. It's likewise. I was so excited when I saw that you were doing this series. Um, and you posted about it on LinkedIn. I had to share it with everyone I knew. I was so excited uh, because I remember those days fondly. Um, and, I, you know, it, it really has made me who I am today. And I'll get to that later, I'm sure. <laughs> so you so were Barney's publicist? Barney had people? Barney had people. Yes. He had an entourage. Um, 
and uh, and I was fortunate enough to be part of that group of people. And you know, you were talking about the business of Barney. That that is very much part of what I did. I didn't do business deals. I talked about the business deals. So so. PR for Barney was in support of all those live events like Carrie's talked about, the concert tours that you've talked about, um, and the home entertainment releases. And, and, the, and, the, and, and the hospitals too, right? Oh, all yeah. All of that. that. That's part of what we call corporate social responsibility. And what I love about Barney and, and Nancy, and I talked about that on, on the phone yesterday when we briefly visited, um, what I loved about that and those appearances is we were going to do them regardless. Now, part of my job was to let media know that while Barney in, was in town for his concert or for his appearance, we were also going to go to the hospital and visit the children there. Um, mm -hmm. And sure, I would love it if they would come and, and see Barney interact with the kids and see his show for the kids who couldn't leave the hospital, mm. hospital for a show. Um, job. What and really spoke Nancy. to me. Yeah. Oh and my. We were going to do the visit it, regardless. That Love amazing. pictures. That's beautiful. Yeah. We were, we, that was part of who Barney was and who we were as a company. Is we were going to do this visit. If media wanted to come, that's great. We'll welcome you there. And we've got a whole process to do that. Um, but we'll be there. And I love that you're saying this because when, I, when, when it first started going and it exploded, Mm -hmm. You know, I would have people call me about all the money Barney was making this and that. And I said, but you don't understand the commitment that they make. All of the hospitals, all of the giving back that they do, like you said, mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. It wasn't if media was going to come. No matter what, they were committed to doing that. And you can see she's cheering up. It, it changed my life. Yeah. It absolutely changed my life. And the company, it was so important to them. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we need to talk to Jackie about where you were before Barney. Yes. Because you mentioned media. Yes. Well, well. <laughs> uh, to do PR, you have to have a certain understanding of how media works. Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate to be able to bring that to a, the table when they were looking to add to the PR team. Um, I didn't have any PR experience. I vaguely had an understanding of what it was, but I did have media experience in spades. Uh -huh. So I had always wanted to work in news, and I did that here in Dallas. I worked for the C for CNN and the, the Dallas Bureau. I worked for uh, KDFW and KTVT, which the TV are the stations, Fox and sure. CBS mm -hmm. stations here in Dallas. But I also worked for a few radio stations here in town. Wow. Carol D, but also... Warm in my heart, my very first job out of college was at a station called KEWS. Oh my God. <laughs> KU, KU, what now? WS? Let's continue on. Here's a picture <laughs> of KEWS. Do you see Carrie? Oh. Do you see two of the girls kind of? Do you see those two? <laughs> oh! That yeah, I did not. Definitely. It looks like I put my picture in there, doesn't it? Just my face. <laughs> yes. I was mornings, I was nights. We've known each other for, and now I can hug oh, you. Oh, yay. <laughs> I wanted to surprise you to let you know that you're not the only one who has pictures and friends. My road to Barney was just a little longer than yours. <laughs> so there yeah. you go. Well, it's, I, I told you from the beginning of doing this, I was going to learn something new every week. And boy, I just, I'm looking at this going, well, what is happening here? Yes. Isn't that funny? She anchored. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, right? Mm. But I was one of the assistant producers. Again, it was my very first job out of college. Um, I was assistant <laughs> producer, working nights and weekends. And I wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. And when you work in all news radio, mm -hmm. you're not just writing one story about one thing. You're writing dozens of stories every day, six to seven to eight versions of a story, trying to keep it fresh. Mm -hmm. um, and... So that's uh, def definitely developed my ability to get work done fast. Well, and you were a great writer because I would read your copy in the wow. morning. It was the first <laughs> all news. It was the first all news FM radio wow. station in the country. And I guess yeah. after three, four, or five months, it, it had got a short life. It got sold. It wow. got sold. And we all went our separate ways, which. Was yes. it led you to right. Where you so, are, yeah. so at the at the end of my news career, or that portion of my career, mm -hmm. um, I was working at the CBS station, um, 
again, nights and weekends, uh, mm -hmm. because when you're young in the news business, that's when you're working. Right. Nights, weekends, Were holidays. the older people nice, though, to you for the oh, most yeah, part? Oh, okay. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> <Sure. Okay. laughs> um, but one day I got a call from a friend of mine um, who was working at the company. It was called Lyric. Yes. It was right before it was purchased oh, by like Get Entertainment. The company. This the is company. the Barney company. Um, yeah. And she was the PBS station relations manager. Yeah. You remember Jill, I'm sure. Yes. And someone I used to work with named Denise Landry, who was the lone person on the PR team at the time, gave me a call, said, we're looking to grow our team. We think you would be a good fit. I'm like, are you interested? I was like, sure. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, you know, I submitted some writing samples and did the interview and uh, got it. Somehow, some way, I was fortunate enough to to uh, to get get the gig, so to speak, and and um, I started right as Barney was doing a zoo tour, and that was in support of a home entertainment release. Now, keep in mind, I had no business background whatsoever. I do I did not. I was I had a learning curve here because right. while I knew a lot about media, how to book a TV show, how to write a script, what elements were needed to tell a story. Sure. How, you know, I knew how the journalist mind well, worked. Well, sure. I, I took on a job of a dancing dinosaur and I didn't know how to dance. So I completely yeah. understand. You're like, I'll figure <laughs> it out. Yeah, the learning curve. I totally understand that. And it that. seems that is this a very common thread yeah. for a lot of the people who have been a sure, part of Barney. Sure. We you can know. do this. Yeah, I can do it. We got um, this. At the time, also, uh, there had just been an open audition for the next series of Barney and Friends. Which was going to be the series I was coming in. Yes! So I was leaving the tour, and I was coming into uh -huh. that. So they were, I already knew that I was going to be doing it, and they were auditioning the kids and getting everything ready while I was finishing up on the tour. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I, I learned while I was doing, um, and yes, I learned that PR was in support of everything. So, like, we talked about the live events and the concert tours, yeah. The home entertainment releases, the, the series on television. Well, and those uh, kids, real quick. Yeah? Who were some of those kids that auditioned for that show? I don't remember. <laughs> no, no, but you remember, that, those are the ones. That's Selena Gomez. Oh, my gosh. And Demi Lovato. Yes. That's the audition oh, that they, both of true. them. Yeah. Now, I will add quickly for everyone is the, the business of Barney. The offices yeah. were in, in a suburb of Dallas named called Allen. Um, the studios were in Addison, and it was a special treat to be able to go to the studios. Ooh. So I um, well, unfortunately didn't go as often as I, I would like, but I'll tell you, it was magical when I did get to go. There was a stream, an actual stream that wound its way through the set. Um, we was, had three different studios, yeah. and that was one of them. Yeah. I used to love it. I was like... 30 plus years old and I'm like running through the studio <laughs> like I'm out of heart. Um, but, uh, but yes, the business of Barney also includes the toys, what people often re to refer to as stuffed animals. It's called plush in the business. You guys have talked about the wonderful plush. And um, it gets talked about constantly. You I see, know. Yes. I, it, that was kind of new to me. Yes. Um, <laughs> but but also, about it. the tie-ins like diapers and, and juice boxes. Um, there is a multi-million dollar, or there was, I think there still is, it's owned by Mattel. I don't know the details. Yeah. But when I was there, it was a multi-million dollar business behind the stuffed purple dinosaur that came to life. And so I have brought a few little stats. These are stats that... Oh, excellent. I love that. this. We're, we're excited we're... today, Nancy. We're banging the heck out of the mics. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm by the way. I know, but, this is, but see, what I like about that, this is newsy. There's a lot this of energy going on in here. I, I love this. it. Okay. Uh, you got you to gotta tell a story with facts, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So this, these factoids, if you will, were true when I was there. Do not know what they are now, so I'll ca caveat this. So, what year, what what years are we talking about here? When I was there, I was there 2001 through the end of 2004. Okay. So at that time, these are the stats I was using in in the stories I was telling about Barney. Yeah. More than 65 million copies of various Barney videos had been sold at that time. More than 100 million books had been sold worldwide. 
and the series aired on 320 public television stations and in more than 100 countries. The show wow. had an average audience of 6 million viewers. So I bet. I, I, yes. <laughs> Astonishing. Um, so yeah, I, I was able to experience so. Barney working directly with the kids and see yeah. how they would just hang on. They'd hug them and hang on to because telling... Because all the meet and greets and all that, yes. that you were there and you got to see that. Yes, to working with the Wall Street Journal, working with New York Times to talk about stats like these that really tell another side of his story. Exactly. Yeah. So what were these reporters wanting to know about Barney? I mean, were there times where they, were, was Barney actually interviewed and how? Oh, sure. Were, I mean, who talked and where was Barney and who was the suit? And, <laughs> I mean, how, how did this work? Well, I worked with media all over the country, whether it was the Today Show or mm -hmm. Live with Regis and Kelly at the time, mm -hmm. um, uh, the Associated Press, the People Magazine, TV Guide, local media. It just depended on what it was that we wanted to talk about. You know, did, were we talking about yes. the stage show tour coming to town? That's one story. Are we talking about the new series coming to PBS? That's a different story. Um, and different people that they would interview. Yeah. But for Barney, yes, we did interviews. Absolutely, we did interviews. And exactly. I did every morning show across this yes. country. So sometimes we do interviews where we'd have a spokesperson with Barney because the Barney voice either couldn't be there or for one reason or another we decided that he wouldn't be there. Almost like a translator. <laughs> right. And so they'd act as a translator and Barney would had some a few tracked songs that we could use. You could you could mm -hmm. do a performance. Right. And then sometimes we would do interviews just the Barney voice. That would be at radio stations or print journalists, right? Mm -hmm. um, and occasionally we'd have both there if it was like the Today Show. Sure. Everybody's going to be there. We did Regis and the Today we Show. Did, and... We did. Um, so that being said, uh, in the case of radio interviews, for example, we'd I'd take the voice and they'd always, they all were always surprised. Like they expected the seven foot tall purple dinosaur to be there. Yes. And the look on their face is like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and were all oh different my. stations and formats yes. interested? Yes, they were. Um, and of course, you know, we did a lot of ticket giveaways with the stations as you do when yes. you go on tour. And uh, one of my favorite memories, this was so funny. Um, and I, I would do it if I knew the lyrics, but I don't. So we were in, I want to say it was El Paso. We were doing a PBS tour and we were going to hit a couple radio stations up while we were there, morning radio. That's another thing about PR, by the way, you're working from like 4 a.m. till <laughs> right. whenever the day and ends. So that, and yes, so I had many. Yeah, early calls, uh, yeah, early, early calls. calls. Um, and so I took Barney voice. It was not Bob West. It was not Dean. It was Tim. Yes. And we go to this, we hit a couple stations, and we end up at this urban station. And um, and by urban, I mean they play rap music. Uh, but the... Yeah, I'm on to rap. I'm sorry. So let's continue on. Uh, yeah, heavy metal, rock, classic rock, and um, children's music all the way. Continue. Industry club urban. So we go. First, they're kind of surprised. They're, they, they're expecting a dinosaur. This ordinary guy shows up. But that's okay. Yeah. They're totally bought into the scenario. They're talking about this big dinosaur that's in their studio. He's here to talk to everyone, and he's taking mm -hmm. kids' calls. So little kids are calling, you know, they're on their way to school, mom in the car, um, and they're asking Barney questions. Now, we've got a set of questions that are usually asked, and we have a pet answer. We've, set, we've, we've answered the question enough that we know what our answer is. This one little kid asked, what size shoe does Barney wear? What size shoe do you wear, Barney? And Tim's like, God, what size <laughs> do I wear? I mean, he's thinking it. I see his eyes wide. He's like, uh, and in his mind, as he tells me later, he's doing calculations. Well, Shaq's foot is this, and he wears this size. 
So Barney is this bigger than Shaq. <laughs> so he's estimating what his shoe size will be. And he says it with pure confidence, like, of course this is my shoe size. Wow. It was hilarious. I, it was hilarious to me because I knew what was going on in his head. And look at my face like, no one's ever asked that before. Um, but that same visit, uh, the DJs asked if Barney had a favorite song or favorite rap song, favorite rapper. Which I'm mine, too. Again, we're thinking, I'm thinking in my head, oh, boy, <laughs> we're <laughs> stuck now. No, Tim belts out, without hesitation, in Barney character, Rapper's Delight. <laughs> From start to finish. I don't suppose you have that anywhere. I don't, oh. I don't, I wish I did. And the, the look on my face, the look on the DJ's faces, we were like, jaw rocked. Wow, what a moment. And they, they did use that uh, for the station for a couple years. Um, because yeah. who can beat that, right? Um, so that was a great People one. ask, I mean, we've all gone through that. Yeah. You do a lot of live live performances. I did several of them. A uh, morning show in Mexico City. Well, I don't speak... Spanish, and I went on, and they gave me five words to listen for. Five words to listen oh, for, Bob. and I went out there not understanding a thing. And I danced, and we hugged, and had no clue what happened. And same with you. I mean, every one of us was like, "How is this going to work?" Yeah, there was something else that was challenging for TV appearances: is um, if they're going to have kids on set. They, the producers, they're going to have kids on set. Usually they all, everyone at, at, that works at the station brings their yeah. kids and they set them up around them. You have to have, we learned, learned before I got there, you got to have Barney meet the kids first because you do not want kids in their, um, you know, they, they, they see him on TV. They don't realize how big he is. So much like those kids you see crying when they meet Santa or the Easter Bunny, <laughs> you don't want that. You oh, don't want God. that experience. Oh. Uh, so we'd always have Barney meet the kids before the segment. Because he's not only big, yeah. but he does big movements. So he's even bigger. And that tail can... can take you out. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard. So we have heard. Right. So did you all travel together then on some of these? Some of these, absolutely. Um, I wasn't fortunate enough to, to travel from city to city on, on the buses uh, for the big tours. Uh, but I would go to the opening night city. Usually I would go to the city that was kind of the training wheels, you know, show. And then the big opening night, which is typically someplace like Radio City Music Hall. Um, and then big, big markets. Uh but I had wonderful, wonderful counterparts on tour that um, I could set up the media appearances or the media coming to the venue. Uh, and then someone would make sure everybody got up and went and did it. But you're dealing with so many different variables, so many, mm -hmm. I mean, different Barneys, different kids, different. Sure. I mean, how did you keep everybody straight? Um, you know, we had a. How did we do that? <laughs> do, you, do you remember, were you part of the Philadelphia 76ers Don't remember. game that, because th this hits everything that you're, you're talking about. I it was, so. do you, I think you were, I think you were there. It was Dean mm -hmm. and myself and we went out on one of the breaks. So the idea was Barney was going to go, I had a jersey. So oh, that's, yes. You were. Uh -huh. <laughs> so Barney has the jersey. And I'm thinking, now, how is this going to... It's sold out, and I'm going to run out on the court, and I'm going to hand out T-shirts to kids. And I, they play the I Love You song. I go out, and the whole arena boos me. <gasps> oh! I don't remember this. Boos He's me. locked it. And I'm out there, I'm out there, whatever that is, 15, 18,000 yeah. people yeah. booing me. Go and as soon me. as I handed a T-shirt to a little kid, uh -huh. they completely flipped around and started applauding and went crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and that's what we saw over those years is that, that adults did not get it. They heard the song and that immediately started the booze and I come skipping out to 18,000 people booing me and as soon as I reacted with those kids then they got it. Oh, mm -hmm. this is and the kids lit up and they hugged me and it went crazy. 
Oh, I, thought, I remember that so well. Because <laughs> Dean was up in the booth. I thought, you know, you lucky son of a gun. I'm out here getting booth. <laughs> What's going to happen? And you all are away from that. But it was incredible. And that's the experience you saw, saw a yeah, lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. we as adults, or adults in general, have developed a certain cynicism, uh, mm-hmm. skepticism about the world, right? Yes. And yeah. I would say journalists are doubly so. Um, they just... You know, if something's too sweet, it's immediately under suspicion. Yeah. Uh, and so I dealt with that quite a bit, working with the media. Um, what I needed them to do was, you know, they'd want to they'd want to trip him up in right. interviews. They'd want to grill him. They'd want to get him somehow to admit that he's some dude that voices, don't, uh, bar, uh, you know, Barney. Yes, yes. And is not this 200 million yes. year old dinosaur. Yes. And when Barney does interviews, he is Barney. And I make that clear. Yeah. I would make that clear going into an interview. This this is who you're talking to. When we come back, we'll finish off the episode nine of Purple Tales podcast. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to LJP Speed React episode three digit three three three. I am so sorry for the huge delay. I just came back from the bathroom. Thank you for waiting, and let's get back to LJP Speed React episode three three three. And continuing five four three two one go. Do not make a you know don't do not mistake. You're talking to a 200 million year old dinosaur. Yeah. Well, and I told and you that the the responsibility. You mm -hmm. were always in character. Yeah. Carrie, mm -hmm. Carrie was gone. Mm -hmm. Whatever the Bob West, everyone we were gone. Yeah. It was yeah, exactly. the character. Yeah. We were t we learned that from the beginning because we saw how important it was to the kids. So. Mm -hmm. And we needed them, we needed the media to buy in yes. to the idea and to pretend, which is what Barney's all about, right? Exactly. Uh, using your imagination to pretend that this dinosaur is boop, 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 Colin. <laughs> Who was the <laughs> toughest, that, if you can recall? I mean, you, I, you know. Do you remember anyone that just kind of stands out and was, you had a hard time I with? I don't. Them? And, I, you know, maybe that's because we did so many interviews, which is a or great you're just Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, sure. That's what No, it what it is, <laughs> it's. Dean, Bob, Tim being that good, not breaking their character, not just going with the interview as, as Barney, no matter what they ask, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and those were honest, sweet answers, and they didn't know what they were messing with. We're not breaking. <laughs> wow. This is who he is. Well, sure, yeah, in we the are. beginning, David Joyner was doing all of those big shows when it was... Mm -hmm. And David and Bob were doing those, and so they had been yeah. over the years, and it just passed on to all of us. Right, and, and that's important um, to, I thought, and I still do, to mm -hmm. that character and, and to this kind of business is is not um, breaking that, busting through that wall. Um, we We need people to buy into it and believe it, and even if they don't, even if they think it's goofy... To at least enjoy the experience. But or like, see, oh. we believed it. Yeah. So even if they were skeptical and then we came in the room, oh, yeah. we There's never no broke character because we ever. believed it 100%. We saw Absolutely. the power of it. Yeah. Now, you were in New York together then, right? Or we did you do, didn't you bring, or what? I can't imagine we weren't at, at some point. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, we absolutely oh, were. Yes. <laughs> oh, far oh, and tacky. Yeah. 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 Was, imagine the reaction there. Was this? Was this right before Barney's Colorful World went on tour? It might have been, because I we, came up and you took me around. So describe yeah. We walked picture. around New York. Describe okay, so one of the stories we did while we were there was with the New York Post, and they wanted to get Barney, like the day in the life of Barney. Yes. <laughs> oh, my. So we went around New York like Barney would yeah. Yep. <laughs> He's going on the subway here because that's what. And we did. We went. Do. We went down there. And the crowds loved it. We also have. I don't have them, but there were photos that I saw of crowds reacting in the subway. I'm well, like, what? And you can't see that. You see those blue tent back. That was a farmers market. We went oh, to the farmers okay. market. Oh, and that's a, a police officer that you can't see that's cut off. You see a little. Yeah, and he had the biggest grin on good. his face. Yeah, he's holding what it looks like a, almost a flashlight or something. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> the same thing because. They're, they're told that they're going to be doing security, and then all of a sudden we come bouncing in, and they're like, what in the... That, that always oh, just delighted my heart. It's just the look yeah. of people, the looks on people's faces as we went and did things like this. Um, this was great. I loved having this photo spread in, in, the, in the post, um, mm. but I loved just the looks on people's faces in New York City Totally not expecting that their day would start <laughs> with seeing a dinosaur in the subway. Well, absolutely. And, <laughs> I mean, kids would be, I'm like, I can't believe I'm having this opportunity. Barney is right here. Yeah. What was the most difficult part of your job? Um, that is a tough question. It was a, it was a great job. Yeah. I would say the most difficult part... Um, from a tactical standpoint, when I started, he had had, he, he was already a classic character at this point. He was already an icon. So yeah. he wasn't, um, fresh. He wasn't on top of people's minds every day, like yeah. whatever the hottest thing is at the moment. Right. So, um, so at the time I was there, it was really trying to keep him, mm -hmm. keep him in the news, keep him and positively, yes. of course, um, keep him you know, really keep him at 
establishing him, I would say, as a classic character that would live on forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so that's where we were in promoting him, no matter what he was doing. Um, hey, there are new episodes coming up. Hey, this new deal is signed. Hey, this and hey, that um, was really important to us. Um, on a day-to-day basis, I would say, you know, working with those 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 skeptical journalists and, and getting them to buy into the idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there were there were occasions of, of um, you know, the, the Barney Bashers that... Wow. You know, you had to determine, is this something I needed to do something about? You know, at what point do we need to do something Crisis about? Crisis management right. for Barney? Oh, that's ridiculous. Right. I mean, um, wow. And, you know, we didn't... Fortunately, during my time there, there weren't too many big <laughs> issues... Um, there were some issues, you know, that we had to bring to legal, um, yeah. but that really more was about um, intellectual property issues and not so much, uh, you know, worrying too much about what this one guy in whatever state was saying. Um, it would be different know, it, now, too. Yeah, absolutely, because we really, that's media. what I was going to say. We didn't have social media. Right. Yeah. And that was all going on. Right. My favorite question to always ask anyone mm-hmm. was, when you got the Barney job, mm-hmm. reaction of friends and family? <laughs> Laughter. <laughs> um, everyone just thought that was goofy. Why would you do that? Huh? <laughs> and, again, coming from the news world, most of my friends worked in news at the time. Um, and they would just outright say mean things about Barney uh, to my face. No. And um, <laughs> and that by then I was already he was already in my heart by that point yeah. Yeah. you know immediately I would say even uh, and I would say well you know that's that's fine he's meant he's not for you he's meant for preschoolers he's meant for exactly. toddlers they're Spending learning uh, you know <laughs> uh, not for you ma'am and uh, just pretty much leave it at that uh, you know I figured. If they're going to get it, they'll get it. That day will come. And if they don't, that's that's okay, too. And now what do people say when they hear that you worked for Barney? Oh, they think I am awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so last week, I, went, I was a speaker at the Dallas International Film Festival's high school day. It's... 600 kids, which I didn't know going in, by the way. Uh, <laughs> 600 kids rotating through sessions throughout the day. There's four or five of us speakers. And my section was all about PR and film and entertainment. So I start telling them about what I'm doing now, and then I talk about, but this is how I know I'm going to bring them in. But my very first PR job was as a publicist for Barney the Dinosaur. Now... These are high school kids. They're 16, 17. They have been alive as long as my PR career has existed. (laughs) They lost their minds. They were just like... (laughs) We sang songs. Mm. Yes. These kids are too cool for a lot, right? Or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're too cool. They're too cool. Mm Mm-mm. They, we sang songs, we sang I Love You together. They started it. I said, well, you can't start it without finishing the song. Do we exactly. all sing the song together? Um, and then, you know, I told them what other brands I had worked on while it hit. And they just, uh, and then I've also worked on, on brands that they've, they've adopted as they've been growing up, like Dragon Ball Z. Right. Um, yeah, Dragon Ball Z is over 9,000 million. <laughs> Joking, but anyway. And they, mm, I, I was, they thought I was pretty cool, I would yeah. say. <laughs> well, you are pretty cool. <laughs> because what you learned from Barney, you have moved on with it. I mean, it's always with you, isn't it? I mean, tell us it kind is. of where you are today. It is. And what you learned from Barney. Well, I would say, okay, so what I'm doing now, I'm doing freelance PR work. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say that... The getting the job with Barney has changed my career. I mean, changed the exactly. course of my career, changed my life um, in in so many ways. And 
And because I thought I'd get kind of teary, I kind of wrote it down. Okay. So <laughs> she is a PR. After all. I know. It's going I to know. be perfect. Yes, this is, this it's going to be perfect. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. That's too much pressure. Uh, but I, part of PR is you're always a behind the scenes person. Not always, but usually. Um, so this is kind of a a different day for me, being in front yeah. of people. But um, you know, it was truly. A magical time and a lot of people have said that magical time um and yeah. and it's true it's not even being uh, corny or cliched about it it's an yeah. honest yes this is what that was for me um and getting that role has really helped me determine what i do in my career in terms of yeah. what jobs i take um now i've made some missteps <laughs> don't get me wrong but what I learned then and what drives me is how passionate am I about this project mm -hmm. or this company or what they do? How passionate am I about their the brand, the product, and the work I would be doing for them? Yeah. Um, and it, it also cemented for me the importance of loving what you do, uh, having fun with your coworkers. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. Exactly. Uh, the power of love and enthusiasm. I, I I get the jobs I get and I get the placements I get for who I work for because of that enthusiasm. Yeah. Do I feel it? Do I feel it way in there? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm going to do it. If I don't, mm, mm. Maybe, not. maybe not. Um, but most importantly, I would say the power of belief. You believe it to be true. Um, that's what your comments carry on that. <laughs> well, you know, I, I love this. I can't get enough of it because you know how, how much I feel that way. And yeah. we talked about this from, from day one, from episode one. Mm -hmm. We're not telling them to say these things. They, you know, everyone feels this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We saw things you just can't believe. I mean, you just can't believe. And there was such a commitment level all the way through. Everyone... Yeah. Truly, they weren't told to. They truly believed it. They, they it loved it. It taught me the, you know, a lot of people are, are, have a fear of failure. Yes. What it taught me was things will go wrong. You know, the, oftentimes the biggest fear there would be, well, what if the costume doesn't get there? And then it happens. Right. And then you figure it out. Right. <laughs> oh boy! You know, um, and you 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 find a way, uh, and that has helped me throughout my career. Is you find a way, it's okay. And you know what that right. way was? That was that Barney magic that we talk about exactly. so much. Wait a minute! If the if the if the costume didn't show up, what did you do? Oh, you find it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> you find it. Uh, we had some amazing events, people that really were tasked with making things happen and making them happen uh, you know, like clockwork. Um, but every now and then, uh, a costume will get lost in the shipment, lost, um, or gets dropped off someplace else and where it's meant to be. I mean, this happened at an appearance that we did, and I don't remember where. Um, <laughs> and we found that costume, and we, our events manager, Kathy, <laughs> Kathy Schumacher, oh um, would be on the phone with the shipping company and whoever dropped it off. Like, and, 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 and in the meantime, we would do, um, oh gosh, what did we do? It was one show where it was 20 minutes late. The costume wasn't there. What did we do? I don't even remember. We figured out something we had, I think. Uh, one of the local PBS people who was there kind of stretch out the introductions. We had someone else yeah. do something to entertain the crowd um, until we, we found our way. But we did. Well, because you ought to understand some of the things we did, like we did um, the Macy's Day Parade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you do rehearsal the night before in front of Macy's on the street. And you've got the dinosaurs out <laughs> on the yeah. street mm -hmm. of New York rehearsing their number. It's a pretty crazy thing to pull something off like that. Yeah. And they do it. Yeah, dozens of people made it happen. Yes. It may so happen. It's like 
big purple dinosaur is just showing up. Yep. <laughs> Sing as, as well yep. it should. Well, I mean, and that, like the Philadelphia sure. 76ers thing. There's yeah. so much work that goes into that. I just am told to get, I get there and I go through and do my part. But there's so much that goes on right. way before I get there or know what's going on. Yeah. It's behind the scenes. See, it that's is. what's so fascinating. <laughs> that's what I love talking to you about this, Jackie. Um, are you have you kept in touch with any of the other Barney people other than it was was Carrie's call out of the blue or was it Well, you know, he messaged me after he saw me post um on a on on LinkedIn, um, you know, thanks and and then the conversation grew from there. But mm. every now and then like these circles just kind of Well, we've run into each other Venn at the, diagram at every at now the, and then. Uh, State Fair, the Texas we State did. Fair. We did. Ran yeah. to the fair and then yeah. last year I saw your photography at the fair. Yeah, I won to Two of my uh, photographs were in the state fair. Yeah. And yeah, I he won ribbons. Yeah, I won, yes. So, you know, I was a uh, PR team. I've been on the PR team at the State Fair Aww. of Texas for the last couple of years. Another fantastic job. Oh, yeah. Um, but we run into each yeah. other. We're all in those circles. Well, we, too, are in a big <laughs> well, circle. Obvious, now obviously. we have completed the circle. It's yes. all one degree I've of separation. Seen, I've, seen a, right? I've seen a picture, Nancy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Could this, could Barney <laughs> happen again? I mean, have we... Is yeah. the world too sophisticated for Barney now for please and thank you? No, and I'm so glad you bring up please and thank you because we did a whole Barney push <laughs> about please and thank you. And we did um, workshops with parents and their kids to teach them manners. We worked with the Emily Post, um, what's the name of their institution? Maybe it's called the Emily Post Institution. Um, yeah. To teach them about please and thank you and inside voices and... <laughs> um, and that was probably 2003. Uh, so it's something that Barney had always been about, uh, certainly. Um, and he's still alive in some respects. He, he's, I still see he, his toys at Target. Well, he's more alive than you realize. I um, had a photo shoot this morning um, with a, a kids' dance company. And I was finishing up, and, and the, the shoot was done. And the teacher said to the kids... We need to clean up. And they start singing Barney's clean up. So having no idea who no. I am, nothing. And I this happens all the time. I have seen this all the time. And they start singing clean up, clean up. If, <laughs> and I'm just smiling. And of course, the teacher doesn't even know. And there's a Barney moment happening. And I run into these all the time. And I know you see them. And obviously you saw them with those kids last week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the time. Wow. Yeah. So, wow. yeah, I, I think I would love to see a, a Barney resurgence. Um, and, you know, and maybe it's happening and I'm just not part of that world. Well, you are now. I mean, uh, maybe, a little bit of, <laughs> maybe a little bit of a resurgence here. Um, but I, you know, he'll always be in, in my heart and, and um, my favorite dinosaur. Okay, so I'm going to put you on the spot here, Jackie. Okay. Uh -oh. You're the PR guru, the marketing genius. What should we be saying about Purple Tales podcast? What do people need to know? I know I put you. I know yeah. I put you on the spot. Uh -oh. I am. I didn't. She doesn't have a paper for that. I don't You're, have that. Yeah. In my notes, uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. In my talking points. Um, you know what we have now that we didn't have then was the power of social media, and the social media influencers. Yeah. And at the time, we were kind of beholden to traditional media to carry the conversation myself to get it there, um, them to say, yeah, we'll do it, you know, and, and, and it happened. Um, mm -hmm. it, that's not necessarily half has to be the way it works anymore. Right. Um, yeah. and if you've got a fan base and you've got people or at least people you think would be in love with it, then harness that, you know, um, whether that's on Instagram or I wouldn't say Facebook, uh, Probably, ah, shoot. Hmm. <laughs> We're looking at ages like 15 through what? 40? Yeah. 35? Yeah. Oh, easily. Yeah. No, oh, we are. oh, my sure, gosh. Sure. We, we, we sure. do know that we are actually. Right. We are seeing that. Um, so. And older. I mean, yeah. now they're grandparents. <laughs> Absolutely. True. See? Yeah. True. Um, so there's, I would say there's much more opportunity now than there had ever been. I think I think she's hit on something, Gary. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. Yep. You are an absolute delight. Oh, thank you. Well, I you learned it from Barney. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Please come back. Thank you for having me. Oh. It's so good to see you again. So good.
Thank you, Jackie. That was Purple Tales Podcast Episode 9. What do I think about this episode? It was amazing. So far this episode went to be a success. Anyways, that wraps up for this episode. El Elch from the Ads Episode 333. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned for the next one. Which is going to be the Purple Tales Podcast Episode 10. But until next time, this is Jerry saying goodbye. Peace out, baby. We can't wait to be asked to be guys very soon. But it's bad, Jeff was saying out. See ya. Always happening But I try